It's always a good day when FedEx shows up at your house. And it's an even better day when they show up a few days early. Behold, our right rear wheel emergency brake assembly. Some assembly required. Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. Today, we're working on the rear brakes and the emergency brakes on our 1930 Ford Model A chassis. This chassis has given us our fair share of surprises along the way, and today, won't be any different. Join us as we pull off the rear hubs and drums and see what this classic Ford has in store for us today. Let's get to the shop. Let's get to work. In our last episode, we took apart the front brakes and looked things over. We greased the bearings and put everything back together. Today, we turn our attention to the rear brakes and the emergency brakes. We began with the left side. We pulled off the left side drum and found a mess of cobwebs and dirt. It looked like it hadn't been opened for quite a while. The emergency brake lining was worn, but usable, and the brake pads were solid. Once we had it open, we began to go through the brakes and began cleaning things up. We started with the drums. Using some emery cloth on the braking surfaces, I sanded away at the dirt and the buildup on the brake and emergency brake surfaces. This is a messy job and it kicks up a lot of dust. So to protect the bearing, we stuck a little paper towel in the hole to keep out any dirt and debris. Once we finished the sanding, we sprayed the drum down with a little brake cleaner to wash it out and clear away any contaminants. Over the past few weeks, George has been steadily cleaning the wheel studs on our wheel hubs. Over time and with use, wheel studs can become gummed up, making it hard to take lug nuts on and off. Once he had finished cleaning the threads, we took off the drum and found something unexpected. The right rear emergency brake assembly was missing. Emergency brakes are important to us, so we ordered up a new set. With current part shortages, it took some work to locate an available replacement. Once we did though, we ordered it up and we had it in a few days. The assemblies that you can buy today include everything you need from the carrier plate and the brake lining to the connecting lever and toggle lever pins. Before putting together the new brake assembly, we wanted to remove what was left of the old one. I removed the four cotter pins and four castle nuts inside the grease baffle using an 11 16 socket and a pair of needle nose pliers. The emergency brake lever must be removed before the emergency brake carrier plate can be taken off. To do this, you need to remove the brake lever bolt and lock washer using a half inch wrench. Then, Slide the lever off the toggle shaft. Next, pull the toggle shaft out of the backing plate and the emergency brake carrier plate should be free. Now it was time to put the new emergency brake assembly together. 
I began by putting a real thin layer of grease on the toggle lever and then inserted the toggle lever into the bushing tube on the carrier plate. The new carrier plates also include new pre-installed bushings as well. Then I attached the two emergency brake toggle links to the emergency brake band using toggle lever pins and cotter pins. These special pins are used to hook all of the emergency brake links together inside the drum. Next, I attach the emergency brake connecting lever to the toggle lever using another toggle lever pin and cotter pin. Finally, I connected the connecting lever to the two toggle links with a fourth toggle lever pin and a cotter pin. This needs to be connected in a very specific way so that the two toggle links create a pivot point for the connecting link to attach in the middle. Page 1-44 in Les Andrews' Red Book provides a good graphic illustrating this connection. Finally, it was time to attach the woodruff key to the end of the toggle lever, insert the grease baffle, and attach the two emergency brake retract springs from the brake band to the carrier plate. With the emergency brake assembly ready, it was time to change out the worn out brake shoes on the backing plate of the car. To remove the brake shoes, you should first remove the two short front retracting springs and the longer rear retracting spring. Once the springs are off, you can remove the brake shoes from the backing plate. I'm gonna have to figure out the right cotter pin. I got the old ones laying there. This goes on this way with that taper like that. Due to the current part shortage, finding a good set of brake shoes was a bit of a challenge. We want to replace both rear brake shoes to keep things consistent. The friendly folks over at Mike's Affordable were able to help us out with some reline shoes, arc our shoes to the diameter of our drums, and had the brake shoes in the mail to us a few days later. Once the brake shoes were set for the right side, we attached them to the car and attached the emergency brake assembly to it. Over at the bench, we removed the roller pins, brake shoe rollers, and the brake adjusting shaft from the brake shoes on the left side. We inspected the rollers, pins, and brake adjusting shafts, and all of them appeared to be in good shape, just dirty. The adjusting shafts for each shoe should be an equal length and bevel, and the rollers should be perfectly round. If not, it's a good idea to replace them, otherwise, your brake shoes will not center correctly. Once removed, we cleaned and greased these pieces and attached them to our new brake shoes. 
Next, we inserted the adjusting shafts into the adjusting wedge bracket on the left rear backing plate and attached the long brake spring between the upper and lower brake shoes. From there, we attached the short brake springs on the shoe and the track studs. Finally, we connected the emergency brake assembly to the connecting lever and wrapped up the left side. We've still got to attach the right rear emergency brake lever and the infamous brake lever spring, but with our weekend drawing to a close, that will be a job for another day. Join us next time as we wrap up our work on the rear brakes and go through the process of making some much needed improvements on the back end of our car. We'll tackle all this and more next time on Epic Restorations. <laughs>